Um, around the tree, the rope just gets gets tangled. You've got the knots every so often down down the end. There is your carabiner, which goes on to your your rope that's going to twist around three times. Go along the hammock and down the middle. You've got your pocket and the same one on the to, other end. Uh, go through the materials that um, we, we, you need to buy in order to make. Uh, this kind of hammock. Uh, so um, this is the paracord which has got seven strands inside it. And, um, so so this paracord is used um, on the end of the hammock and I've, I've gone around it three times and made made an, a simple knot. Uh, I, I chose to buy a climbing carabiner. Uh, this is from uh, Clog but uh, you can see that it can carry uh, 23 kilonewtons, which is a huge force and will never go anywhere near that um, with this hammock. But um, the next thing is the thread. I I chose, to, I've never done this before, and so I chose to buy the strongest type of thread that I could buy. So after having a look around, um, I bought four, four kilometers of this stuff because that's what it came in. Um, and this is bonded nylon and it's and it also comes in any color you like, so it's black because I the next material is the uh, ripstop nylon itself. You can see that I went for a um, hexagonal design and the way this works is, the way that ripstop nylon works is by um, having two different weaves. One one is the basic flat weave and the other one is this um, hexagonal weave. It I want to show you on paper what it is we're going to make. So the material you're going to need is going to be um, it's going to be 3 meters by 1.5 meters. Now this can, this takes into account um, the end material you're going to need to roll over to make the edges and also the seams that you're going to need to make along the long edge. <clears throat> at the end on on the seam on the seam here if you look at it from a sideways um, position all we're going to do is roll the material like this we're going to stitch it twice there, and that and that will do you um, for the seams because they don't carry any really any any stress. Um, on on the end pieces, when we come to here, um, we're going to roll it over three times, so just like that, and then we're going to put three seams down there. Now this. Doesn't come from any any technical manual. This is just my um, my belief that this this is the best design. And then the the paracord that you're going to put in, you'll have three strands of it, and they will fit into the okay, inside of that. Okay, so now it's time to make it square. And you can see that uh, down here I've got a big set square, but you can use a table edge or anything square you like. Um, I needed three meters, so you can see from this corner, I've got one, then two, and finally uh, three meters. I used a normal tape measure and some uh, tailor's chalk. And you can see we've got a, a few centimeters left, so we're going to use that um, that section to make the bag uh, for it. So the next thing is just to use the straight edge from down there, put it here, and then cut cut line here to make so, the length three meters um, long. Here you go, you've got the uh, two long sides uh, in my left and right hand and on the right hand side, I don't know if you can see it, but I've folded it once and twice and I've uh, sewed it up with uh, two, two seams, two sewing lines and every 30 centimeters I've done a reverse stitch and then a forward stitch so it kind of locks itself even if even if any of these threads came loose, they, they wouldn't go very far. Um, so now it's time to do it for the other side. And the way you do that, or the way that I've uh, meant to do it, is, is that you just fold it once, about a centimeter and a half, and then you fold it twice, another centimeter and a half maybe, and then uh, get a pin and put it in, and do the same thing for the next half a meter and 
because you don't want pins everywhere with such a large sheet. So uh, just sew uh, the first 50 centimeters and then uh, repin the next half meter and so carry on and carry on. So I pinned the first uh, half centimeter and the foot is down and we're ready to stitch. So you uh, turn the crank handle uh, till the needle is down, give it a kick start. And then you go and find your pedal. And um, take the pin out, obviously. And we can start. And then do your reverse stitch. And then carry on all the way along. Simple as that. Okay, so now I've come to the next pin, which was about 30 or 30 odd centimeters away, and set the pin out, um, go a bit further, put reverse, and forward again, and carry on all, all the way to the end, okay? And then once you've done that, go back and sew another uh, line of stitching, and, and we're ready so, to move on to the um, end. I've done one end, uh, so you can see. So you can see down the sides, down the long sides, we've done two stitches by rolling over. And on the end, on the long edge, um, we've got two, um, two more seams. And you can see at the end, they are very much uh, doubled over to make sure they don't come loose. Um, if you look in the end, you can see that it's rolled over three or four times uh, to, to create this. And you can, and, um, to make sure that the rope goes all the way uh, in in the middle of there, uh, so that you actually have two levels, two layer two layers of material um, stopping it. So uh, the first thing to do is go down the other ends. Ah, too much material. Too much material. You can see uh, this is the um, unfinished end. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to roll over the seam half a centimeter, five millimeters. And so that, and the reason for that, I'll get to later, is that when you roll it over, uh, you want to be able to tell that this seam is being sewn, so you can feel it through the material. So, and and it also uh, stops any fraying. So, the first thing to do is just run one line of stitching. We've got again, we've like got the long edge, and we've got a short edge. And on the short edge, uh, you can see that I've just done one line of stitching to stop it fraying. Um, grab a measuring tape, and what you can do is you're going to fold it over. Fold it over uh, two inches, just like that. And you're gonna put a pin on the back side of it. Put a pin on the back side of it because you're gonna fold it over. Okay, and now you're gonna fold it over once more, like that. So now you can see the pin, and you're gonna fold it over once more. And what you should be able to feel now with your thumb is that line of is is your, that line of stitching that you just did at the top. So grab that pin, fill the line of stitching, and put it back in again. And there you go. So now you've uh, created the create, and you do that all the way along. And now you've you've created that final fold. So you can see the inside, just as before. I showed you. You've got the uh, two layers, and down the and if you take this apart, you can see in the middle uh, there's the uh, line of, line of stitching. Okay, so do that all the way along, and then effectively we're just going to do uh, one stitch along where that pin is, just and then finish sewing, one. all the sewing, okay, so there's the long side, here's the short side, and here's the end. Now, now what we have to do is we have our paracord, okay, which has been melted on the ends, um, and you take one end, one end of the paracord, and you're going to thread it all the way through the middle, or the through the middle of the two, of the short end, okay? And once you've done that, you're gonna go around and around. So effectively, the same bit of rope will go around three times. And then we're gonna tie them together. And then oh, I've uh, threaded it around uh, three times. Okay, so you can see there's two loops, and then here's the end, and here's the bit going off the string. So um, you wanna make this hole about as big enough to fit your uh, your your hand through, okay. Um, I've left 30 centimeters worth, and you want that probably on both ends. Uh, 
Just get your scissors and chop it off. Uh, you can see that one end is, is already uh, sealed and you can see the other end is has got seven uh, nylon strands in the middle so you need to get a lighter and you need to uh, just melt it very gently so it doesn't burn and just make sure all the nylon strands uh, melt together just like that. Okay, so now both ends of the of the um, cord have been cut. We need to make a knot. So uh, the easiest way to do this is just to do one knot like that, just a normal right over left, and then do do it again. I think they call this a fisherman's knot. Oh, I always do that the wrong way around. Hang on. I think they call this a fisherman's knot. But it effectively ends up like that. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so you have two strands and then you're not. And then what you want to do, <clears throat> which I think is probably the best thing to do, is what, what climbers use, uh, which is called a stopper knot. And um, if you have it like this, uh, you make a, a loop and you go around three times over itself, one, okay, so I want one, two, three, and then you want to go up through the middle of the knot, okay, up through the middle, and then pull it tight, and that creates a very tight stopper knot, just like that, okay. So you've got your knot in the middle here, and then you've got your three turns and your stopper knot there, okay? And you want to do this exactly the same on the other side. So if I do it again, uh, I flipped it over, obviously. Uh, you want to make a knot like this. Go around over the top of the knot three times. One, two, three. And go around again. Go around again and go up the middle of the knot. Er, a bit short now. One, two, three, and up again. Okay, and then pull that, pull that tight. And there you go. You've got a pretty indestructible knot there. The the rope will go before that knot goes. Okay, so in the middle we got a knot, and we got two three uh, stopper knots, one on each side. So there, in, in essence, you've now completed, if you do exactly the same on the other end, um, you've just completed uh, your hammock. Now, I've moved the knot over to the side and, and thread it into the thing, and then get a carabiner or whatever type of, of device you have, and then just clip it on the end, there, done. Okay, so this is uh, with, the, with the hammock all packed up in, in the bag, and I weighed it on the scales, and it was 350 grams without the straps and without the uh, carabiners. So I was just thinking, what else could I do to this hammock to make it awesome? And I was thinking, I've seen uh, online there's a hammock called a kamak, and I've also seen other hammocks. Effectively, where well, they get their hammock, and in the middle of the hammock they have their they have their little bag, they have their little pouch sewn on the side of the hammock, so you don't end up with a little light bag that will blow away in the wind. So I thought, how can I do that? So all you gotta do is take your bag that you've finished, okay, flip the top inside out, and sew that top seam, that top seam there, uh, to the to the middle of the hammock, and then it gives you a little pouch, a little pouch for you to put uh, books in or whatever as you're lying in the hammock. Awesome! I'll do that, and you'll see that when when I put the hammock up between some trees. So I found the middle of the hammock. And I have I have uh, pinned it on, and I'll sew it on. Okay, guys. Uh, so here is the hammock, and uh, I'm going to show you how to put it up. Um, these trees are a bit far apart, and so you might need some extra straps. So we've got two carabiners. We've got our, our rope, which all came out of the bag. So attach carabiner on one end. 
touch the carabiner on the other end. And I go and find go and put it on the try it out. Well guys, thank you for watching, uh, I hope you enjoyed and found it useful in a, in a small way of uh, making a hammock. This is my second one, my Mark II, and I'm sure if I made it again it would be better. So please leave any technical improvements down below and subscribe and I'm sure I'll make something better next time. Great, thanks again, bye.